Hey there, I'm Fee Peel from the Lived Perspective. I'm a white skin, short red and brown haired human tonight, you can't see the silver, <laughs> in a black t-shirt underneath a grey cutty, sitting on top of a closed toilet seat um, in my bathroom on the unseated lands on which I dwell, uh, with a toilet shelf behind that bears who gives the crap toilet paper and a grey bubble bath mat and some a hint of some towels above. <laughs> Bringing your mental health month musings 26. These pocket notes on person centered care. How you doing? Yes, there is a very good reason why I am speaking to you from the closed toilet seat in my bathroom. Um, I want to have a chat today a little bit about relationship. Like I said last night, we've kind of gone through all of uh, Carl Rogers' key learnings in the introduction to on becoming a person. And there's a theme underneath, I'm pretty sure you probably picked it up. It's about relationship. It's about how we interact with another. So tell us then, Faye, why on earth are you talking to us from the toilet? Well, interesting you should ask. I mentioned... Um, about a week ago now, that um, come the 31st of October, the way that uh, we, as in the multiplicities of feet, interact with social media is going to change significantly. And this epoch in time, which has been um, a bird's eye view on the life of feet, is going to end. Um, and I gave a little bit of context as to why, and that is because of our multiplicities and as it is clinically described the dissociative identity disorder that we live with um, still doesn't explain why I'm sitting here on the toilet talking to you um, I'd made a comment to my GP a little while ago a lot of the therapeutic work that is done around DID although there is no cure or fix for DID is um, through what is called a form of psychotherapy called open dialogue and I have we have had the um, the gift of being able to work with a therapist that is trained in internal family systems internal family systems uh, is not actually designed for DID and in fact it's um, uh, one of those therapies that um, one of the things that Richard Schwartz who developed it says is that it's it's you know sometimes not the best thing for DID there needs to be a certain level of uh, buy-in from all of the alters for it to be effective but the basic framework for IFS internal family systems um, which was originally developed with people who uh, were struggling with the disordered eating is that we all have multiple parts inside of us not alters as it is described by did but parts and each of them uh, play a significant protective role in our life so <clears throat> um, many people will understand this in some way shape or form as negative self-talk which is something that we the multiplicities of feet don't actually have but many many do um and that's like you know yo, you're so stupid why would you think of saying that why would you do that da, 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 da. a lot of people identify with that and ifs is a framework in which uh if you stop and you listen to those attacks or those wars within and ask each of those parts of you why they're attacking you what are they seeking to protect what are they worried about if you were to open up that part of you and love yourself for who you are for the mess of who you are and for the beauty that they can bring what might come of that the idea in IFS and a lot of this style of therapy is being able to look at ourselves with compassion understand why our protective mechanisms are there and find ways to meet the needs of those different parts so that they can then be employed in the service of better things. Um, and it's all about relationship. It's all about how we love the different parts of ourselves. 
It's a very, very common idea that is around the place in terms of if we want to change the world, we first have to change ourselves. I'm going to challenge that just slightly though. If we want to find our place in the world, we first have to love ourselves. And that is not an easy task. And I can unequivocally say that as someone with complex trauma um, who has never understood what it is to be loved when it's been genuine, we've pushed it as hard and as far away as we possibly can. And when it's had its own agenda attached to it, we've held it way too close. And that is a massive challenge for many of us that live with complex trauma. However, if we can learn to love who we are and for us, that is the multiplicities of me, that's a massive task because half the time I have no idea who's steering the ship and it's not me. And those people, those alters, those parts have different agendas, different needs, different ways of interacting with the world, different ideologies, different beliefs, different values, which is very messy sometimes. But that is a challenge for me. And as I sit as someone that is trained in person-centered care, and as I look at the development of the lived experience workforce, and as I look at the clinical clash of worlds between that and our non-clinical approaches and the defensiveness and the protectiveness and the competitiveness, it's not that much of a different journey. And in fact, a lot of my thinking these days is how do we take family systems, which is where it all started, and then internal family systems, which is the development of family systems theory and systems theory and operationalize this so that we do not see each other as enemies. So with that in mind, I'm going to invite you to go back now to the consumer clinician scenario that we had in play um, and see if you were to play the clinician thinking about relationship, thinking about being able to love yourself in that space as the clinician and the person in the room that may or may not be presenting an argument that you want to have. If you could stop that scenario at any point in time and shift the narrative, how would you shift it? Still didn't tell you why I'm on the toilet, did I? Because a lot of, a lot of our open dialogue seems to happen here. I don't know why, but I will be here minding my own business and all of a sudden my altars are talking to each other. A little insight into the weirdness of, of the life of me. <laughs> but now, head on over and check out the clinician consumer scenario. Here we go. Clinician. So, look, you're here in hospital that I know I'm hearing that there's been all of these really, really overwhelming things that have brought you here. Um, why don't you just take a holiday? What do you mean? Well, you know, all of this stuff, it just, it sounds to me like you need to take some time and find yourself. Maybe, you know, see if you can go and leave for six months and, you know, just go somewhere nice and quiet and, you know, just really reflect on, you know, who you want to be and what you want to do. What about my kids? Well, you said you, you know, you split up from, from your husband. Maybe he can look after them for a while. Okay. Um, what about my job? I'm a contract worker. If I don't, um, if I don't work, I don't have an income. Oh, surely you've got friends and family that can help you, you know, and give you, you know, some support over the next six months. What about my studies? You know, I'm about halfway through a semester and I've got three different subjects. Yeah, this is why you're so overwhelmed. I think you should put your, you should defer your studies. What about um, my friendship groups? I'd, I'd really just, that for me is really meaningful that I'd like to stick around and just, you know, even, oh yeah, no, you could do that. Just, you know, spend six months going out and having coffee and going to restaurants and how am I supposed to do that without an income? 
why not? You can make it work. And we'll catch you on the flip side.